GPT-3 versus GPT-4. Today, we're gonna go ahead and put them to the test against one another to see which truly comes on top. And is it actually worth the $20 monthly investment? Welcome back to TQM or the quintessential millennial channel where we talk about all things side hustles with an emphasis on AI. If you are new around here, consider smashing the like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribing to the channel. So let's go ahead and dive right in to the video. Now, if you look at the dropdown, I just purchased chat GPT plus, and you can see there are three options default, which is chat GPT 3.5. There's a legacy 3.5 and now GPT four as well. And the first question you might have that I think would be a good one is what's really the difference. The thing that I've noticed immediately is how fast GPT 3.5 really is. And you could see its reasoning is mediocre. Its speed is quick and its conciseness is again, pretty poor. The legacy GPT 3.5, the one that you're probably using already reasoning is at a three, the speed is slow and its conciseness pretty poor. Now GPT four, this is where things got upgraded. And that is its reasoning is amazing. It's at a maximum of five out of five. It's conciseness is at a four out of five. And now it's speed though is a two of five. And I've noticed how slow it is to formulate an answer, but you can see it thinking as it types, which is quite incredible actually. And we'll show all those things throughout the video. So make sure you stay tuned till the end where I'll go ahead and show you guys real life sample prompts of what things look like between GPT three and GPT four. So let's go ahead and dive in. First question I asked GPT three was write me a viral YouTube title with the following GPT four versus GPT three side by side test. And the answer that it gave me was AI battle Royale GPT three versus GPT four, which AI language model reigns supreme. Pretty good. I was impressed. And I was thinking to myself, I'd probably use that on YouTube, but what did GPT four give me as an answer? So if you see over here, I asked GPT four, write me the same thing, write me a viral YouTube video with the title GPT four versus GPT three, a side by side test. And it said GPT four versus GPT three, a side by side test AI battle for supremacy. And I was pretty impressed because I didn't ask it to even write me a script, but look what it did immediately after I had to stop the generation because it was getting ready to completely generate an entire script for the video as well, which I could have used to record today's video, but I ended up deciding not to, but it's even started by saying as a host with enthusiasm, see, they know that YouTube requires you to have a significant hook. So if you rewind earlier to the video, you realize that the first thing I do is not talk about, you know, hi, my name is, I do that always secondary to the introduction to the topic. And they say with enthusiasm, hello, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we have an exciting showdown between two of the most advanced AI language models ever created. I should have maybe started the video out that way, but it was still impressive that it did that without command because it basically knew what was coming next, maybe using its reasoning and tapping into that and then formulating an answer. So there was one prompt. The other one that I thought again, was let me test it on something that I know a little bit of about, and that is cryptocurrency. So the question I asked GPT three first was write me a 100 page book on cryptocurrency. Of course, it gave me the typical, I'm sorry, as an AI model, I can certainly provide you with some information and guidance about crypto, but generating a 100 page book from scratch is beyond my capabilities. So GPT 3.5, sure. It typed this out really quick, but notice the pretty significant difference between the two. If you don't know anything about crypto, I'll just highlight some of the major things. So chapter one, an introduction, chapter two types of cryptocurrencies. And they talk about some that are a little bit outdated now, actually Bitcoin cash, Litecoin, they're still top cryptos. But again, the fact is they listed them there. They talk about the topic of crypto mining, blockchain technology, crypto wallets, crypto exchanges, regulation, trading strategies, investment opportunities, and future. Very sensible. And I think the timeline makes, again, it does make sense. But if you go back to the top, it did say, however, I can help you with an outline or topics that you want, you, that you might want to cover in a book about crypto. So let's go over to GPT four. 
I asked it the same exact question. Write me a 100 page book on cryptocurrency. And it said as an AI language, the same spiel, but I can provide you with an outline and brief introduction to the book. If you find, and this is something that GPT-3 did not do. If you find the outline suitable, you can ask me for further information on each chapter. So though it's not going to write a 100 page book immediately, if I like chapter one, the introduction to cryptocurrency, I can say, can you now make a couple pages out of this piece of information on chapter one? And it will do that for you. GPT-3 will not. So let's keep going. The intro to crypto, similar to the first one, understanding blockchain technology, which GPT-3 left off completely. Bitcoin, the pioneer of crypto. Altcoins, the evolution. Again, categorizing other crypto assets, what the altcoins are, the rise of altcoins and their impact in the crypto ecosystem, mining and proof of work. So again, you can tell that it's reasoning. And I think that's what continues to impress me is the fact that it has such high reasoning skills. So it added the fact that it's not just crypto mining, but also proof of work, proof of stake and other consensus mechanisms. Probably a lot of jargon to you, but to me as somebody that understands and has been learning about crypto over the last few years, I was super impressed. Initial coin offerings and token sales, decentralized finance or DeFi, which is at the forefront right now of crypto, NFTs, guys, it brought up a lot of the relevant topics in crypto now. Crypto trading strategies as the other one did, wallets and security, left off from the previous GPT-3, legal and regulatory aspects, the future of crypto and blockchain. And this here is what intrigued me. The big thing with these AI languages is oftentimes they are actually two years behind current schedule, meaning there's a lag period for their information to be updated, at least a two year rewind. So think now we're in 2023, AI languages like ChatGPT or GPT-3 and 4 only can date back to 2021. But look what they highlighted right here, number 13, the current big hot topic in crypto in 2022 and 2023 the role of central bank digital currencies or CBDCs. Now, if you don't know much about crypto, just understand that the United States is looking to establish their own cryptocurrency. So is the United Kingdom, you know, the European Union. I'm talking pretty much globally. A lot of banks are starting to figure out maybe this digital currency thing makes sense and we don't really need to continue to print dollars, but instead move over to a digital asset class or changing fiat currency into something like a coin online. So the fact that it touched on this made me as somebody who's a big fan and someone who studies or a student of cryptocurrency, very impressed. And lastly, the long-term impact of blockchain and crypto. Comparing those two, you can see some significant difference that come with chat GPT-4 relative to GPT-3 or the legacy version that you might all be utilizing on a day to day. So again, those were just two of the things or two questions that I decided to ask GPT to give you guys some examples, but I still don't want to answer. Does the $20 investment actually worth it until we highlight some of the things that were listed on this article in front of me, GPT four versus GPT 3.5. So you could see the thing that they're highlighting is GPT four complex vocabulary and syntax examples. So you could see the two things that they put next to each other is describe the most explicit detail what a slice of pizza is like. Describe everything in engaging, creative, and savory words to make the user want to eat a slice. Do this in a paragraph. So shout out to Golden Penguin for publishing this article because I thought it was actually pretty well written. But you could see some of the words that they highlighted that GPT-3 did not use. For example, words like impeccable or harmonious blend. You could see crispiness and chewiness. Who would have thought words like these could be used to describe a slice of pizza? But again, commanding these AI languages, especially GPT-4, it goes into more detail and it stayed concise. Now it said, generate me a description for a YouTube. Generate me a description for a YouTube as if I had to sell a subscription like my life depended on it. And it said, make it no longer than a paragraph pitch, but extremely detailed and creative. Look at the difference. Not very concise with GPT-3. You can see there's a little bit of run-on sentences. Things look a little bit long, but it's still pretty good. But look over on the GPT-4 side. Very short, sweet, to the point. And I think, again, the word that it starts with here is discover. 
And I think that by itself is one of those things that you can consider a hook. Discover a world of limitless entertainment and knowledge with YouTube Premium. The GPT-3, YouTube is just not a video sharing platform. It is a gateway to endless entertainment, education, and inspiration. Both start off pretty well, but I do like GPT-4's answer that much better. Now it's testing the concept explanation and reasoning. Write me a one to two paragraph explanation about SMTP pop email servers work, but explain it like you would be talking to a group of eighth graders. GPT 3.5 did a pretty good job overall, but I really like how GPT 4 said literally, all right, eighth graders, let's talk about how email works. Again, showing its intuition and also reasoning capabilities that it went directly to as if you're going to be addressing an eighth grade crowd. So as you can see with all these samples, it is pretty remarkable what both of these platforms are capable of, but it seems obvious that GPT-4 has some strong advantages over three or even 3.5, except of course, the speed aspect. So if you're somebody that's always on a rush, whenever you're searching things on these type of AI chatbots, then GPT-4 might not be for you. But overall as an AI intelligence tool or an AI intelligence bot, I think the answer is absolutely. Because what does the $20 subscription come with? Not only do you get access to GPT-4, but you also have the Turbo GPT 3.5. So relative to the legacy version that we were using for all my previous videos on this channel, well, 3.5 types answers quickly and there's a lot more bandwidth. So you're not gonna be competing to have that login. And what is $20 a month? For some people it might be pretty significant, but if you're able to supplement your income by using any of the side hustles that are aforementioned on the channel, you can utilize some of those to again, hopefully make that $20 burden, not really a burden anymore. I do appreciate your guys' support as always. So thank you all so much for tuning in. That's all I had for you guys today. And until next time, everybody, as always, take care.